So I have with me Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He is the challenger to Shashi Tharoor's three-term MPship. Uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, first of all, congratulations on uh, you know uh, this candidate and the fact that you seem to be making a difference, even though it's just a month. You know there is a buzz that is being created, which wasn't there from earlier BJP candidates. No, I think uh, look, uh, you know the fact of the matter is these elections always are a referendum on the performance of a government or a performance of an MP if he's a sitting MP. And it is clear that Tirundavaram for the last 10-15 years has been stuck in a time warp. And uh, really there has been, there is very little evidence of any progress, there has been no investment at all of any kind. Youth, 37% uh, of the undergraduate seats are vacant in Kerala and so therefore uh, I came in from day one on the fourth of the evening when I came into Tirundavaram, I, I came in and campaigned on a plank of uh, Purogudi and Vikasanam, which means uh, pro prosperity and development. I talked about skilling, I talked about investments, jobs, and uh, certainly it is something that everybody wants. People don't want the same status quo that they have experienced for the last 15 years. And, and therefore, I think the message is a message and the intention of what I intend to do in terms of change is certainly what people are uh, responding to very strongly. But were you surprised when you were given the candidature or were you expecting no, it? I, I was asked uh, last year whether I preferred Raj Sabha or Lok Sabha and I had said Lok Sabha and then earlier in January I was asked what is the seat that I would prefer and I had said that I am certainly open to contesting in Tiruvandavaram if I, I was told uh, that because it is the capital of uh, Kerala and it's certainly a very, very prestigious uh, place to represent in parliament and in government. So I had mentioned that to the Honourable Prime Minister. He, of course, did not say anything at that stage. And then the party told me on the 3rd of March and, uh, and here I am. Uh, but, uh, you know, when the, the Congress campaign calls you the outsider, how would you react to that? You know, what you fact, I am an outsider to the traditional politics that the Congress, the UDF and the LDF have done for the last 50 years in Kerala. Uh, they have played a nice little jugal bandi for 50 years and uh, and fooled the people of Kerala for, for far too long. So I admit that I'm an outsider to their brand of politics, but uh, certainly uh, I have said this even when uh, Pindra Vijayan was uh, accusing me of being a, of, a, of, a, of a communal person. I said I am more Malayali than Pindra is, certainly more Malayali than both the uh, players are equally uh, Malayali as both the other candidates. So I think that is a bit of a foolish argument and certainly for the Congress who had foisted uh, Sonia Gandhi as their president for years and had taken Manmohan Singh and made him get elected from Assam and now Rahul Gandhi is imported uh, from uh, UP to Wayanad. For them to talk about outsiders is a bit too much in my opinion even for <laughs> the most uh, uh, thick-skinned Congress uh, diehard, that is a little too much. It's taking irony uh, and killing it and then and uh, and then <laughs> talking about outsiders. But they say, they talk about Shashi Tharoor's 15-year-old track record, the fact that he's been elected again and again and defeated many BJP candidates also. So what can you do that the other predecessors uh, I, could I not? I have to do anything. I, I have to do what uh, is right for the people of Tiruvandavaram. I have promised them development. I promised them a politics of performance. You know me, the last 18 years, I have not spent, wasted even one minute of the opportunity that the people gave me uh, when I became an MP. And I have not wasted a minute of an opportunity when I got to be a, serve as a minister. So I am built like that. I am a person who likes to do things and get things done. And I am certainly not amongst those who write letters and consider that being uh, the reason for their existence in politics or uh, ask questions two times a session and say that that is my great uh, goal uh, to, towards the city or the people that elected me. So I am of course cut from a very different cloth from both my incumbent uh, friends and uh, I think people recognize that I am a doer, people recognize that I can get things done which haven't been done for the last 15 years. There is also a lot of similarity between you and Shashi Tharoor. You know, both of you are professionals. Let me finish. You are both, uh, you know, you have a global... Uh, there is no similarity excepting for the fact that uh, this loose definition of professional, as in we are both not conventional politicians. But uh, I, I would take great offence to being remotely compared to him. He has a very, very different mindset and approach towards politics. I have a very different mindset an approach towards politics. I consider this as public service. I consider this as hard work. I consider this as about getting things done. Uh, he is cut from a very, very different cloth, as you know yourself from being in Delhi. 
and uh, I, I take great exception to the to anybody who says we are both similar or same. So we are not at all. We are chalk and cheese as far as public life is concerned. Okay. So what can you uh, do for Thiru Vansubram that he cannot? What is the one uh, thing that you think, uh, first thing you would do if you are elected? Uh, it's not a question of one thing. This is not some uh, card game that, uh, you know, one, one, one guy wins. There is a comprehensive set of things. There are many crying challenges in Tiruvandapuram that are all signs of deep neglect and negligence over the last 10-15 years. Today we were in a program which the coastal community and whole swathes of coastal community lands have been washed away over the last years. They have been left without homes, they are suffering, their livelihoods have been uh, have vanished over the last five years and they are really a vulnerable community today and uh, the the incumbent MP has only had this to say that this is not my f uh, responsibility, it is state government and it's not the state government, it's the central government and has ma had made no effort to actually solve the problem and that is the uh, absolute uh, difference 180 degrees between somebody like him and many other MPs like him uh, especially in the Congress and me, which is that I will move heaven and earth to get people suffering addressed. I certainly cannot be and I will never be a mute spectator or a letter writer in the face of such deep suffering and uh, turmoil and livelihood disturbances. So, uh, I, to that extent, I will certainly address issues of livelihood. I will address the issues of uh, youth and skilling and preparing them for uh, industries that are o opening up and there is talk of bringing Apple here? No, I have said that I will certainly like to bring electronics manufacturing to Tiruvandaburam. There is a port that is coming up and one of the good things about a port-led economy is that it helps uh, uh, manufacturing industries, especially electronics manufacturing industries become very competitive. So I think uh, that is certainly an area, I have done this for Karnataka by taking the largest uh, Foxconn factory to Karnataka. I have done, uh, taken a lot of other, man brought a lot of man other manufacturing investments, I as in Government of India. And I certainly think that Tiruvandapuram, in, as we rebuild the economy of Tiruvandapuram from uh, what the Supreme Court uh, refers to as mismanaged and a uh, crisis economy, um, that uh, we are able to attract uh, more technology investments, more manufacturing investments, more tourism investments and more uh, investments in fishing and uh, the green, blue economy. So I, I think these are all areas within the realm of possibility that can and must be done and I intend to do it after I'm elected MP and I'm a minister in the new government. Okay, a bit about your personal, you know, you've been a three-term Rajya Sabha MP. How is it, you know, the, the Lok Sabha campaign? How are you finding it? No, I have, uh, as you know, I have uh, campaigned extensively in Lok Sabha for a lot of my colleagues before. I have uh, been... Uh, Pondicherry. Yeah, I've been Prabharis of a state election. So, uh, it's not uh, a, a totally new concept for me. Of course, fighting, doing it for myself is a very this different is your thing. picture on the brochure now today. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that is obviously different. It is, uh, dif it is obviously different to see my posters and hoardings and people uh, reacting to me and responding to me as me rather than on somebody else's behalf. That is, of course, a different experience. I am enjoying every minute of it. I am extremely proud and uh, uh, this thing to proud and privileged to be, have been given this uh, this honor and privilege to represent Tiruvandapuram. And I feel good because uh, after a few days after I reached here, almost every relative of mine or most relatives of mine from all across the Kerala travelled uh, to Tiruvandaram to come and see me and uh, and wish me well and wish me success. So I I think it was, uh, uh, it is and it was it was and it is a tremendous feeling to be uh, a potential member of parliament for the capital of the Kerala Tiruvandaram. Your campaign also people say if they elect you they are going to be electing a union minister if they elect Sashi Tharoor you will just be electing an opposition MP. Which is a fact uh, even though. Mr. Taru tries desperately to delude himself and his voters that there is some miracle that is going to bring a Congress government to Delhi. I think even the most hard-nosed political cynic, including yourself, Priya, will accept that uh, this is a third term for Narendra Modi ji on June 4th and it will be with a mandate that will be even more than the 2019 mandate. And when uh, Taru says that, I just remind people that all the way up to 2019 results, the Congress and all their cephologists kept planting stories and weaving these, uh, building these castles in the in the in the in the sky about how they were going to form a government, and they ended up with 40 seats. So, so I think uh, 
we certainly know if there is any suspense it is about how many seats the congress will end up with will they cross 25 or will they cross 30 that certainly is a is a suspense yeah, but what about the South for the BJP? You know, apart from Karnataka uh, and a little bit in Telangana, Kerala, for instance, has been uh, denied to the BJP for a very long time. Now we see this debate about, you know, um, uh, uh, land which is given to Sri Lankans. So is this just politics of distraction or last minute uh, something no, to appeal fact. to it's the people uh, of Tamil No, it's a fact. I think uh, the people of Tamil Nadu, especially the DMK, who pretends to be at every step uh, the defender of the Dravidian faith, and, and keeps arguing that they are defending Tamil Nadu against all kinds of influences from all around the country, are a party to giving up a part of their precious uh, territory. Uh, uh, Kathachivu is not some, some small, uh, small piece of speck in the ocean. It is an extremely important part of uh, Tamil history. It is an important part of uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Tamil Nadu's history and, uh, you know, all of that. And... And for that to be just given away at the uh, in the whim and fancy of a particular dynastic government, uh, despite opposition from all kinds of levels of bureaucracy, is certainly something that needs to be discussed and uh, spoken about. History is not there for people to just keep it on a shelf and have uh, collect dust. History is out there, written and collated and uh, documented for future generations to comment on and learn from. She also has the 2015 land pact with Bangladesh. Yeah, of course. And that is a, it's out there in the public uh, domain. Everybody agreed. There is no bureaucrat that disagreed with it. There is a strategic reason for it. This is a case where everybody in the government disagreed with it. And uh, still the government went ahead and did it. And by the way, the, the, the important issue here is that the DMK was party to it. The DMK that today talks about sovereignty of Sri Lanka and have supported separatist movements in Sri Lanka, that DMK was party to the decision, which is not the same in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, uh, Mamta Banerjee was party to it and agreed to it in West Bengal. So there is a difference. Even if people want to engage in whataboutry, they may want to read up uh, before they in, in bring Bangladesh into this whataboutry conversation. This is very, very central to the role of DMK and the double speak that the DMK represents today. They claim during the uh, Sri Lankan conflict to speak for the Tamils. They wanted a separate elam. They fought for, they encouraged it. And they, the, on the other hand, just gave up pieces of their own uh, land. So that is worth uh, talking about. That is certainly worth something that the DMK should open up and speak about since they are otherwise very loquacious and articulate about Sanatan Dharma and malaria and dengue and all of that. I think this particular issue, they should uh, trot out their father-son combo and have them speak about it. Something, you know, as uh, you, you've been a professional and then, then now you're into politics, how do you, t I was there just now, for, there was a debate between you and Shashi Tharoor. I mean, you uh, spoke on issues, there was nothing personal, we, which we don't see no, very not often. True. That is not true. The, the organizers told me not to keep it, not to make it personal. Well, you not wanted to, to make it personal? No, no, no. Not to make it personal or politicize it. Talk only about the issues that they, lay, they laid out, but Mr. Tharoor or Dr. Tharoor, uh, whichever way you want to call him, uh, decided to get very political about it. So I, I, you know, look, it's par for the course and I expect uh, almost every uh, Congress uh, candidate to behave in this manner. But that was not what the organizers uh, said. Uh, the organizers had said very clearly that these are these 18 questions and 18 issues that pertain to us. Uh, please stick to that. Don't make it political. And, uh, and I stuck to the script. I laid out who I am, what I intend to do, how I intend to approach these problems. I never mentioned a word of anything or his 15 years, uh, but he certainly had more to say about uh, this uh, dream of him uh, forming a Congress government in 2024 in Delhi, which uh, uh, which is a combination of, I think, delusion and uh, not adequate sleep, perhaps. But this is not an easy fight for you. you know, Thiruvanthamu is one of the few legacy seats, you could say. No and fight, I, no. I saw uh, no, no a fight. picture of Indira Gandhi here, which you don't see very many. Uh, no, no. I mean, uh, look, uh, it, it, is an, it is a state where the UDF, that is the Congress-led UDF and the LDF, have in some sense kept aside everybody. And whenever there was a third party or a third poll that came up, they quickly folded them into one of the two fronts. You know that the UDF, the Congress is there, the Muslim League is there. And yesterday they've also got the SDPI, the political arm of the band PFI. So they are talking, uh, they, they are very, very smart in talking this double speak. And obviously I've been very successful. 
they talk about uh, secularism they talk about religion not being in politics and they go, and go running and embrace sdpi which is an absolutely fanatical uh, uh, political party representing one community so um, so the, anyway the, it is what it is and um, i think uh, that uh, no election is easy i think anybody who says elections are easy certainly uh, i don't think elections are ever easy certainly not in states like uh, kerala where people have been many for many many years brainwashed into uh, believing some things about uh, uh, about uh, the bjp and it will take time for them to uh, i saw some truth. functions take place in a church also you know which is interesting yeah yeah you know i i'm we are campaigning with every community i have uh, gone to mosques i have visited muslim community i have visited christian community i have visited the fishing community and because what i am offering today what narendra modi ji is offering is something that every young person regardless of caste creed community or gender wants everybody every family wants india to move forward everybody wants economic development everybody wants prosperity so that message is absolutely something that is relevant and must be relevant to every 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 family and every citizen of this constituency or in and indeed kerala so that is the message and uh, today the church uh, invited us to speak Uh, I think that is a, it's one of the first times that the church has invited uh, as a BJP candidate to speak, and I I spoke and I and I think I addressed most of the concerns that they have. So finally, what, how do you react to the India Alliance or the India Bloc? Uh, of you know, at least they seem to have come together. They seem to have seen sharings worked out. They've got an issue. You guys have given Kejriwal an issue for them. They didn't have an emotive issue. How Now they've got Kejriwal an issue for them. I don't know. I think it's ED. An it's an embarrassing issue for them. It's the Kejriwal. the first complaint against kejriwal was filed by the congress party in the, in the in the, with the delhi police i think the congress loves alliance partners who are weaker who are dependent on the congress for survival kejriwal has been quickly adopted into the indi alliance fold today and has become the mascot of the congress because uh the kejriwal is now weak and uh, and and vulnerable and kejriwal has brought this upon himself he had for the last 6 months opportunities through nine summons where he could have clarified his innocence if he was innocent he chose not to do so and any law enforcement agency if the delhi police sends you a notice priya and you choose not to respond to it you can do it once twice the third time they'll come to your house and they'll serve you a uh, warrant for arrest that is the way law enforcement works it doesn't change just because you are a chief minister or you are a member of the indi alliance so uh, i mean if they play victim card quite well income tax uh, arvind kejriwal ed but the fact is the freezing ED, of accounts no freezing of there's no freezing of accounts as you know they have said freezing of account freezing of account uh, like uh, joseph gobels hoping that that lie becomes the truth and it is not freezing there's no freezing of account the income tax put a lien on a certain amount of money in that account saying that that much of money should be left in the account because that is the claim that the income tax is uh demanding from the congress party the congress went to the it appellate authority got that decision got uh, didn't didn't get success there and the congress has not gone to the high court why has the congress not gone to the high court yet because they know they will lose in the high court the case that the income tax has is a strong case where the congress knows it has no defense and therefore they are trying to make the most of it by playing victim card and patently lying about the fact and saying that the uh, account has been frozen as you yourself said the account has not been frozen they have money to use there but they are characterizing this to everybody as if it is some great conspiracy to have their account frozen a bit about yourself uh, you know if, do you miss your professional life was your transition into politics uh, organic or was it something you'd planned I've been in public life for 18 years now priya i have uh, i have stopped missing uh, all that uh, i came in of course in my first term never anticipating that i will have a long term in politics i didn't think i'd be successful but after the first term and after the 2g scam and uh, the and the confidence that i got that i can make a difference and impact I stayed the course, and I've been uh, elected uh, three times to Rajya Sabha. I've served three times, and uh, I have uh, served for three years as a minister. And uh, throughout those 18 years, I have had a blemish-free tra track record, and not a black mark against me. I have never had to resign uh, because of an IPL scam. I have never had to do any of that. So uh, I, I've had a, you know, absolutely rock-solid performance as a 
as a as a Which of your debates do you enjoy the most? Do you remember the most that you enjoyed? In in Parliament or no? I, of course, I uh, all the early days when I was a member of Parliament, when I used to speak about every subject, every budget. Uh, I remember the one in 2009 when I spoke about infrastructure of opportunity and governance reforms. When I met the Honorable Prime Minister, who was then the Chief Minister in 2012, in Gujarat, he had that uh, article that cutting in front of him, and he asked me what infrastructure of opportunity meant and what governance reforms meant, and nobody had ever asked me that. And that is the day I decided to be uh, a, a bhakt of uh, Narendra Modi ji because. He was a person who was taking the time to read uh, what one independent MP was saying about governance reforms and the future of the India, and that he would take that time and then invite me to meet him and then talk about it. Uh, showed me the kind of man he was, and uh, and I've uh, always been uh, from that day onwards. I've certainly been a big admirer of his. And what do you do when you're not being pol a politician? What are you reading? What are you watching? Now I'm not. Not right now, I, I, but I, I, no, no. Otherwise, I, I, last year I read 21 books, which mm -hmm. I put up there. Uh, I think uh, at the end of the year I put it up there on Twitter and both. I, I, and as Minister of IT and Minister of Skilling, I think reading is absolutely important and is uh, almost necessary to keep current and be, be to be able to deal with young uh, entrepreneurs and startups who are all very bright and. Uh, aggressive and you know Im inspiring so i think that is absolutely important well, thank you mr chandrasekhar and let's see if you can deliver a piece of the promised land to the bjp this was rajiv chandrasekhar a conversation with him about his plans and his campaign against shashi tharoor for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon